This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. How many of you in the room are actually blogging now? Okay, about half of you. Maybe a little more than half. Okay, good. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll have a lot of very specific, concrete ideas on how you can attack your blog tonight and tomorrow and uh, generate many, many more clicks. So um, a little bit about myself. So I I've been in the web space since uh, 1994, so before Google existed, when Yahoo was just a single page with a bunch of links on it. Um, that, that was uh, when I built my first website. Um, so I've seen a, a lot of evolution through the years. Uh, I run a branding, design, and marketing agency called Stratabeat, uh, and we're exclusively a WordPress shop. So let, let's just dive in. So magnetic headlines, uh, you know, it, it, it can do magic for your business. It can do magic for your website performance. But, but here's the problem. Eight out of 10 site visitors are not going to click on your blog headlines. So think about that. Think of all the effort that you put into your blog. So you write 10 blog posts, which is crushing that eight, eight, eight of those are, are not going to be seen, right? Or you write 100, you write 1,000. Think of all the people who come to your site and they don't click through on your headline, essentially just wasting a lot of your time and your effort and your resources. So why is this? Why aren't they clicking? Well, I think we all know everyone is very, very distracted nowadays. Why are they distracted? <laughs> Essentially because of cell phones, right? Everyone's on their phone all the time. Uh, and uh, with everyone on their phone, they're constantly um, moving from thing to thing. And it's very, very difficult to attract their attention long enough to get them to click through and spend a long time on your post. Also, we want everything immediately now. Everyone wants it fast, fast, fast. And so we don't even have time to click through. Another major reason why people are not clicking through, there's just way, way, way too much content out there. There's so much content. And to give you a sense of how much content is being generated constantly, uh, the software company Domo comes out with a really interesting infographic uh, every year. And what they do is they they present data of how much content is being produced every single minute of every single day. And just to give you a sense of the magnitude of how much content is being generated every single minute, we have 205 million new emails every single minute. 3.57 million new texts every minute. 18.3 megabits of wireless data every single minute. 3.3 million new Facebook posts every single minute. 2.4 million Instagram posts every single minute. 400 hours of new YouTube videos being uploaded every single minute. So think about that. That's a lot of data. It's a lot of content, right? And that's what your blog post is fighting against. That's what your blog post is trying to fight through to gain attention. So it's one thing if Think about it, like all of these stats that we were just discussing, this is just one minute, but here's the challenge. We have to go through this 1,440 times every single day. It's staggering. It's staggering how much competition there is for attention, and your blog post has to fight through it all and win their attention. That's challenging, but we're going we're gonna to talk about very, very specific ways to do it tonight. And, Looking at how competitive it is, looking at how challenging it is, is it worth it, right? Is it worth the effort? Are you going to get an ROI? Well, let's look at a website that's been very, very successful at doing this, and that's Upworthy. Upworthy has been called the fastest growing publishing site ever, ever. So how do they do it? A lot of it is through very, very clever and effective headlines. Uh, Peter... Keekly, and I, and I don't, I'm probably butchering the, pronuncia, the pronunciation of his last name, but, but Peter uh, Keekly, uh, founder of Upworthy, stated publicly, crafting an effective headline on an Upworthy piece can increase its reach by 500%. <clears throat> Think about that. Think about your own blog. Think if you could increase the reach of every single blog post that you wrote by 500% and what that would mean for your website, what that would mean for your bottom line. Pretty significant. So 
clearly there's an ROI. Clearly there, there is, there's a meaning and a significance towards fighting through all of this clutter to make sure that your blogs are read. And so, one, so we're going to go through a lot of formulas tonight. I'm going to present you with a lot of strategies, a lot of tactics, a lot of very specific uh, ways to construct your headlines that are very effective and will generate more clicks. But the bottom line is this. Underlying everything that we talk about tonight, it's really important that you're constantly thinking of what's in it for them. So you may want to write lots of things. I can't tell you how many companies we deal with that write very accurate blog posts. They're very accurate, but who cares? They're, if they're not interesting, if the headlines are boring, no one's going to click, right? And then they're, gonna, they're just going to become another statistic. And I can't tell you how many companies we see like this. And so you can't be like that. You have to see everything from the perspective of your ideal target audience, not just your, your target audience, your ideal customer, right? And write for that person. If you have multiple personas that you produce content for, every single piece of head, every single piece of content, and therefore every single headline has to speak to a unique persona. Every single one. And so when you build out a content calendar, you know over time. Okay, well we have let's say we have three personas. You're mapping it out so that you're mixing it up, and you have effective headlines for the next several months targeting all of your personas. So, okay, so we know that we have to think from their perspective, what's in it for them? Because that, that's, that's all they're going to be thinking when they're looking at our headlines. So let's look at how to do this. One of the most important principles in driving clicks through your headlines is to evoke an emotional response. Why is this? Well, uh, there have been lots of studies done, uh, but, but I'll tell you about uh, Antonio Damasio, who is a neuroscientist in California, who ran studies of people who had damage to the part of the brain that triggers emotions. So these people could not feel emotions. You might meet them and not know that anything is any, any different about them, but in reality, inside their brain, that they did have damage to prevent them from feeling emotions. So what he found was these people couldn't make decisions. So think about that. Without emotions, you can't make decisions. And so if in your marketing you're not evoking an emotional response, your marketing, your marketing is causing your target audience not to take action. Think about that. You're causing that. Same with headlines. And I'm not saying that every single headline, if you write 100 headlines, 100 headlines have to evoke a very strong emotional response. However, the more that do, the more that you are going to physically and mentally enable your target audience to make the decision to click through, to actively click through. And like I said, there have been many, many studies about this and the power of emotional marketing, right? Uh, Jonah Berger, uh, best-selling author of Contagious, Why Things Catch On, he, he wrote a whole chapter on this, a whole chapter on how do you get people to share stuff. And one thing that he points to is the more that you're evoking an emotional response and the more that that emotion is a high arousal emotion, something that really gets you fired up, the more likely it is to be shared. And so it's not only getting clicks, but it's also what, what do they do with your blog post after they click. And so there are lots and lots of benefits to focusing on evoking an emotional response through your headlines. So let's look at some specific ways to do this. So surprise. The human brain is actually hardwired to love surprises. We love surprises. There have been neuroscientific studies done that have proven that actually our, our brains love surprises more than stuff that we like. Now think about that. It's kind of counterintuitive, right? Our brains like surprises more than stuff that we like. And think about, think about movies. Think about novels. Think about storytelling. What do we like? We like surprises. If the if the plot is predictable, we don't like it. Our brains are hardwired for this. And so it's no different with your blog. It's no different with your blog headlines, right? This all, this all makes sense, right? So what does Intel do? Intel is one of the most technologically advanced companies on the planet. And they have every right to be crazy boring with their blog posts, right? 
they could go into so much technical detail that it would be ridiculously boring, but they don't. Instead, they always are trying to surprise you, always trying to evoke some type of emotional response. In this post, listen to the color of pizza. Listen to the color of pizza. It's crazy, right? So they're, 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 it's a bit of surprise, shock, and awe when you're reading their blog. Um, and even if we're talking about something that's not technical at all. So uh, Tim Brownson has a pretty hilarious blog. And uh, in this post, how I'm going to lose all my customers and wreck my business. Right? So if, if he had written a post talking about, uh, well, how I'm going to have a successful business, I'm probably not going to read it. But if he writes, how I'm going to lose all my customers and wreck my business, you're compelled to read it. Like, what the hell is he talking about? Why would someone write this? Why does he want to wreck his business? And it, it's a pretty intriguing piece once you do click through, which I did click through. And, and he's talking about how he has a potty mouth. He curses like crazy. And he curses like crazy in his business, and he curses like crazy in his blog. And he warns people. He says, look, if you don't like my language, don't come to my webinar. Don't come to my... Uh, seminar. Don't do this. Don't do it. He doesn't want you to have a brand touch point if you can't stand that type of language. Well, one time someone ignored all of his warnings and attended one of his webinars and then started sending him emails saying, oh, Tim, bad, bad. I don't like your language. And all you're going to do is you're going to lose all your customers and you're going to wreck your business. Right? And he kept sending these messages to him. And Tim's like, Sorry. That's who I am. But the, my point here is, you know, if he had written a boring uh, headline uh, in his blog, something to the effect of, oh, an angry customer wrote me to stop doing what I love to, you know, you're not going to read it. Instead, he, he turns it into something very intriguing that surprises you. You wouldn't expect a blog post to have a headline like this. The likely cause of addiction has been discovered, and it's not what you think. So again, it get, gets you thinking. One of my favorite all-time headlines, why James Chartrand wears women's underpants. <laughs> again, you, you wouldn't expect it. Surprise, right? Now, the reason why James wears women's underpants is because James is a woman. James uses a pseudonym. So another way to, to get a lot of clicks, be crazy helpful. In the Salesforce blog, great example. This single word is blocking your sales. If you read that and you were interested in sales and you were interested in increasing your sales, tell me you're not going to click on that. Of course you are. And so the more crazy, help, not just helpful, but crazy helpful you are, where you can be the most helpful blog for your ideal target audience, you will generate more clicks. You want to be the most trusted advisor for your audience, right? You want to be the most helpful. That's what it's all about. That drives clicks. Another strategy, be crazy specific. So don't just be specific, be crazy specific. Uh, Neil Patel, um, who's a fantastic marketer, one, one, one of the best, um, he has this great headline, how spending $162,301.42 on clothes made me $692,500. Crazy, right? No one writes headlines like this. But this is why he crushes it. This is why he kills it. He goes to great lengths to be incredibly specific. And you read this, how can you not click on that? It's very powerful. Be exclusive. So... In psychology, uh, you know, lots of brands already know and play off of exclusivity in order to drive sales. Um, think of any luxury brand, and they're all doing it. Um, and you can do it with your blog, too. So there, there are phrases that you can use to make it feel very exclusive, that if they click through, they are accessing very elite information, information that only a few people have. So in this case, for a fitness website, five little known ways to biohack your workouts, enhance your exercise productivity, and maximize your fitness. Pretty cool. Now, if we get rid of five little known ways, though, it changes everything, right? If, if he just wrote 
biohack your workouts and maximize your fitness. Yeah. Right? It's just not, not compelling enough. Why? Because it's not exclusive. It's generic, it's vague, and it's not exclusive. So exclusivity works. When you're writing blog headlines, one of the things you, you want to think about is certainly getting clicks, but then there are also other considerations as well. One is SEO, search engine optimization, right? So one of the things that uh, you want to think about as you're constructing your blog headlines, and, and again, not every single headline needs to be optimized for the search engines, but when you are optimizing for the search engines, make sure you understand the search volumes underlying the language that you're using. I can't tell you how many times we, we come into contact with customers who, again, write very, very accurate headlines. They're very accurate for their business, but no one thinks that way and no one searches that way. Um, we had a client earlier this year that came to us where the very phrase that they were centering all of their marketing, whether it was on their website, in their campaigns, even when they were writing articles, bylined articles on industry websites, they would focus on this phrase. And when we pointed out to them, how many... How many times a month do you think that that phrase was being searched on in Google? Just any guess. One, 10, 20, 60,000, 60, big donut, zero, <laughs> zero. I mean, don't spend all of your marketing dollars trying to optimize towards a phrase that no one is searching on. Why? Because if no one is searching that way, that's, then no one's thinking that way. Search is simply an articulation of how people think. That's all. And so understand how people think, understand what they're interested in, and that will guide you towards a lot of good headlines. Now also, think of social. You want people to share this, right? And so when you're looking at the headline, yes, include a keyword phrase, but also make sure that it's compelling enough that you would click on it, that you would be interested in it. It's, it's not enough for it to be accurate. Right? Accurate headlines are okay, but if they're boring, no one's going to click on it. You've just wasted all your time and resources on that post. And so always be thinking about sharing. Who's going to share this? Why would they share it? Who are they going to share it with? Right? And both are equally important, search and social. Nowadays, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to, to uh, isolate one from the other. Um, Kissmetrics uh, did a, an interesting study on headlines, and what they found was there was a rule of three and three. People focused on the first three words and the last three words in your headline. And so, not saying that absolutely every single person on every single blog post every single time does this, but what they found was, overall, this was the tendency. And if you know this, then make sure that your initial words or your final words in your headline are not weak. Make sure that, that you're not stuffing the meat of your message right in the middle and not supporting it with equally weighty language, right? So there are there's so many formulas for writing effective blog headlines that get clicks. We're just going to run through a few of them, um, and then uh, I'll, I'll share with you... Uh, a list of many, many more. Uh, also, if you Google, uh, Google around, you'll, you'll find many, many formulas. Um, but why don't we go through a few right now? Numbered list is one of the most effective ways for increasing the amount of clicks that you're going to get, even from the same post itself. So, for example, let's say that, that we are talking about, okay, I have a blog and I'm trying to write a post about increasing page views or something like that. So five surprising ways to increase your blog views. Much better than how to increase your blog views, right? Five surprising ways to increase your blog views. Makes you, makes you much more compelled to click. The seven funniest blog headlines ever, right? Much better than the funniest blog headlines ever. 101 headline techniques to turbocharge your blog subscriber rate. Right? So you can see just adding a number, just adding a number is very, very effective. It triggers something in your mind where you want to know what those three things are, those seven things are, those 11 things. I'll tell you a little secret. It's not in the presentation, but 
through years and years of marketing, odd numbers work, even numbers do not. Use odd numbers. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> but it's through thousands of tests, literally thousands of tests. Odd numbers work better than even numbers. I, I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to explain it, but it works. Uh, and also, as you can see here, so uh, Conductor, uh, the software company, did an interesting study where they found that headlines with numbers included increases clicks by more than 36%. And I can corroborate that. In, in everything that we've seen through, throughout my career uh, and, and our agency's work, um, including numbers in headlines definitely increases clicks. Is the spelling out or the number, numeral itself working back? The, the numeral itself, yeah. Not, not writing out. So if it's five... Use the number five instead of spelling it out. How to do something like... So, this is another great formula. How to own the world like Oprah. Or how to build a successful blog like Seth Godin. How to design products like Jonathan Ott. It, 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 it's aspirational and, and it gets your imagination fired up. Again, getting, getting, getting your emotions into the mix. And... You know, we could go on and on like this, uh, literally covering a hundred different formulas. Um, there, there are many, many formulas. I will make my, my deck available uh, online. I'll tweet it out uh, afterwards. Um, or if any of you uh, would like my card, and then you could uh, email me. Um, that's fine. Happy to send you the deck. Um, but it's everything from using numbers to uh, talking about little-known ways to, or the secret of, or su the surprisingly simple way to. So it's all these little twists, these little twists that make all the difference because it makes it more intriguing, it makes it more compelling. Um, we, we've done many, many tests in our own blog. One of the, the formulas here is the ROI of. Now, before we started doing that test, we had no idea whether it was going to be effective or not. In fact, the ROI of blogging was, was one of our posts. The ROI of user experience, the ROI of PR, the, the ROI of SEO. So the first time that we ran it, it was just a test. And the, the response, what was incredible, it, it produced more click-throughs than any other post in the history of our blog. Uh, it produced more shares. I think in total, um, through the... Through the course of, uh, of the life of this blog, it's had over 3,000 shares. Um, unfortunately, through, through a, a company renaming, which me meant that we, uh, we changed our domain name, and then um, uh, as Twitter uh, removed their accounts from the social shares, um, you, you know, it, it's a shame that, that you know, we can no longer see that the full extent of uh, sharing that's being done, but, but I will tell you that behind the scenes, what this did was that this, this proved out that, okay, we test a formula, right? The ROI of, and, uh, and, and if it proves out, then what do you do? You replicate and you replicate and you replicate. And so even though we started with the ROI of UX, user experience, then we moved on to the ROI of blogging, the ROI of SEO, and you keep doing that. We did the same thing with a trend series where uh, we were looking at the market, the digital marketing trends of 2014 or whatever year it was, amazing response, uh, a lot of ROI from, from that. And so we built out about five more trends articles. And so test a headline. It may work for your audience. It may not. Not every formula is going to work for your audience. And so test and test and test. And um, it, it's, it's not just... Myself that's saying this, uh, you know, remember when I was talking about Upworthy, one of the fastest growing uh, publishing sites ever, and they're masters at the headline. And what do they do? So for every single piece of content that they produce, they brainstorm 25 different potential headlines, 25. And so you have to look at yourselves and say, okay, well, how many, how many are we brainstorming for our own blog? Two? Three? Right? So try 25, and it changes the game completely. You can come up with game-changing creativity when you're, when you're fighting through, and you're stuck on 17 and 18, and then you're fighting through to get to 18, 19, 20, and, and it unleashes a lot of fantastic ideas that you never, ever would have thought of. 
And this is explained through psychological terms. It's the five stages of the creative process. Uh, so I'll just read it to you very quickly. The creative process moves through five stages. It begins with preparation, an analytical time when the basic information or skills are assembled. It continues on to incubation, a more intuitive and subconscious time in which you connect the dots in a default state. If you stick with it through perspiration, this process will eventually lead to relevation, the eureka experience when you literally feel the tumblers of your mind click into place and you say, aha, I found the solution. The creative process ends with production, a time when the insights are put into a useful form and shared with others. And so if you go through this process of brainstorming 25 potential titles for every single blog headline that you produce, amazing things will start to happen to your business. And if you need a little help, we personally do not use, I'll, I'll be honest, do not use uh, any type of headline generator tool, and that's why I didn't include any of the online generators, because I, I, I don't believe in them. I, I think you should use your own creativity to figure out what your target audience cares about and what they're going to respond to. However, in terms of analyzing and testing, we're full believers in using software to do that. So King Sumo Headlines is a WordPress plugin. And what it does is it enables you to test many different varieties of your headline for the same post. And over time, it will determine which the winner is, which is getting the greatest click through. And it will drop the others and default to the one that is the highest performing. Fantastic tool, right? It, it auto optimizes your blog headlines for you. Uh, Nilio A-B testing for WordPress, another WordPress uh, only tool. Um, and it's, it's much more robust than, say, King Sumo headlines. It can test uh, pretty much anything in your WordPress site. But certainly, your, your blog headlines is one fantastic way to use it. Uh, and then um, other testing tools, if we skip down to the bottom, Optimizely is not only for WordPress, it's for any website. And you can pretty much test anything on your site. Visual Website Optimizer is a tool that, that our agency has used a lot. It's really fantastic, super easy to use. Both Optimizely and Visual Website Optimizer, you don't need to be an engineer. You don't need to code anything. It's really fantastic. Um, and then if you want to analyze and, and have, have your headlines graded, there are several tools in the market. CoSchedule Headline Analyzer is one. Remember, we talked about the value of evoking an emotional response out of your audience. There actually is a tool to figure out how well you're doing that. It's the Advanced Marketing Institute's Emotional Marketing Value Headline Analyzer. So um, if you ever want to play around with your blog headlines and see what, whether you are evoking an emotional response, it's kind of a fun tool to, to, uh, to play with. So remember, we looked at lots of very, very specific formulas, but you need to test, right? You need to test lots of different options for your specific audience, see what works specifically for your business, your topics, your audience. And remember, the bottom line is, no matter what, make it about them. Provide your site visitors with as much value. Help them as much as possible. And just very naturally, people will be clicking through your blog headlines. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions? The headline about the five ways to biohack your workout. Yes. My SEO plugin tells me I should keep my headlines to fewer than 55 characters. And that headline looked a lot longer than that. That was a very, very long headline. Um, so remember to test, right? So um, remember I was telling you about our, our, per, our test, my agency, with the ROI of, right? And th there's, there's nothing online that says that that's going to work. There's nothing online that says that that formula is going to work. We tested it, and it, it worked better than anything else. It worked better than all the best practices out there. And so what I would say is it's possible that, um, yeah, that, that, that headline sucked and didn't get any click-throughs. Um, I would guess otherwise, though. Um, and sometimes, so here, here's the thing with best practices. It's great to, to, to follow them, but it's also fantastic not to follow them. Because if everyone in your industry is following best practices, don't follow them. Break the mold. Be different. Right? Deviate. Because that's also a neuroscientific, um, highly effective marketing strategy is to deviate and shock and all. Remember we talked about surprise, right? So the more that you can be different, you know, and test it, right? <laughs> test it, then it can be very effective for you. Thank you. Yeah. 
headline cliche fatigue, like people don't want to click on five ways to blah, blah, blah anymore because everyone's using it. Or, um, I mean, a lot of the ones in, in the big list yeah. are things that are just like clickbait city in a lot of contexts. And so I don't know if you can quantify it, but are people getting fatigued and not clicking on that stuff anymore? Is there a backlash? In, in looking at the data? We're not seeing it. Yeah. Um, and so I, told, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. And you would expect that. But we're not seeing it in the data. It mm -hmm. still works. All of these still work. Um, and, and with regards to clickbait, I'm glad you brought that up. Because, yeah, what I'm saying is uh, that's the last thing that I want you to do is clickbait. Clickbait is if you have a very, very intriguing, compelling headline that, that's not backed up with an equivalent value in, in your blog post itself, right? So you're... you're, you're tricking people into clicking through when you really don't have the substance behind it. Um, never, ever, ever do that. Because again, think about, think about what, I, what I said. What's in it for them, right? That's what this is about. That's what this is about. The more that you're their most trusted advisor, the more that you help them more than anyone else in your industry, more than anyone else in your industry, right? That's more valuable than anything. Now, if you combine it with numbers and formulas and things like that, it can be very, very effective. But, but yeah, to answer your question, in looking at all the data, we haven't seen any type of a backlash, at least not yet. As you put in um, one of your examples of the 101 ways to something, yep. um, can companies just limit to, oh, that number's too big, and I'm not going to click because that's too big? It, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on the specific topic, the specific audience, the specific thing that, that you're talking about. You know, do people want to read 101 different things? Um, and if the answer is no, then yeah, maybe 11 is better. <laughs> um, and so yeah, it's, it's you, know, it, you know, I don't want you to, to mechanically use any of these formulas. Think about what your specific audience would love. What would they get a lot of value out of, but, but would find intriguing. They, would, they might be surprised about it. They, they might enjoy it. They might laugh, right? Or, or they might just be so, so intrigued as to what you're, you're getting at to, to, to click through. And so, yeah, I don't want you using 101 of anything if, for example, if you think, well, you know what, my audience isn't going to read 101 of anything, then don't. Then don't use it. Yeah. So I run a nonprofit organization, so network of organizations. Great. And what we've done for many years on our blog is we, we blog our members' stuff out. Yep. Um, and, of course, link, linking back to their site. So in theory, bringing people back to our members' website. <laughs> Right. Well, if, if you're just driving people, so you have an excerpt and then you, you take them to the well, other side? actually include the whole thing so that they don't Okay. Um, oh, okay, okay. And then, um, so... I see, I see. So I think, um, do, do you have web analytics set up so you can see the data? Yeah, I, I would, yeah, I would test it. Yeah, honestly, and, and test a weekly, you can test a monthly. We, we have clients that have been very, very successful with monthly roundups, um, and, and some of them can get quite extensive. So I'm not, it's not necessarily that you're gonna save a lot of time. Like, like we, we have a client that will put like 100 different links in their monthly roundup. It's a lot of work, it takes them days to put it together. Um, but, you know, I would say test it not so much from the perspective of is it going to save you time, but what gets the best performance? What, what is your audience telling you that they like the most, right? Are they spending more time clicking through on a roundup, a weekly roundup? Or do they really enjoy seeing what the actual title is and clicking through and maybe you're getting more page views that way? Okay, I can, I can answer. Um, 
So this is another thing that, that you have to test. Uh, it, so if it's a video versus, for instance, if it's text um, or if it's an infographic, um, you know, for a long time, marketers have, have been shouting that, oh, you should do video, oh, you should do infographics, you should do this, you should do that. Uh, honestly, you have to test it because video doesn't always outperform text. Sometimes text outperforms video. Um, and so, it, it, you know, if, if, for example, if I go to sportsillustrated.com, si.com, right, and all I see is text and there are no videos, yeah, I'm going to be turned off and I'm, I'm going to find a site that has videos because that's just part of the nature of a sports site, right? Lots of video, and it's very, it's exciting, and it's, it's engaging. Um, but if, if, if you're talking about, the, you know, okay, the five ways to generate more uh, click-throughs on your headlines, and that's, you know, is that better as a video, or is that better as text? Who knows? You know, I think you just have to test it and see. And certain audiences are gonna love video. We have certain clients, their clients, love text and they, and they don't click on their videos. Um, now, on the other hand, I, I was dealing at, at a, in a previous life at my last agency, I was dealing with a very, very large, one of the largest uh, pasta makers in the, in the world. And um, they, uh, uh, they had all these videos all over their site, tons and tons of videos, right? And no one was watching them. Why? Because they were boring. Okay, so, you know, some of it is, what's your content? Is it exciting? Is it awesome, right? Again, what's in it for the, for the audience, right? Because you might think that you have all this value to add, right? And, and, and that, that, you know, you're investing all this money in your videos, so where, where's the return? Well, you know, you have to turn it on its head and say, why? Why would they be so interested in this? Why is this the best video that they're going to watch today or this week or this month, right? And so... Yeah, I would say, sorry, but, but you, you have to test and see what works and make sure that whether it's text or video, make sure the content's awesome. Okay. Uh, I remember the second one, too. So with, you, you mentioned, like, with the automation, it wasn't, like, a good way of kind of generating titles. Yeah. Do you know of any, like, manual services that, say, will think of a title for your video or article or particular? Uh, you know, if you work with a marketing agency, they, they would do it for you, or even a, an independent marketing consultant. Um, there, there, you know, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them. Um, and, you know, I, I would say if you were looking for that type of help, yeah, if, if you're looking just for an individual to help you, maybe just find um, someone like that. Or there, there, there are so many copywriters out there. Maybe find a mar Here's the thing with copywriters, though. Find a marketing copywriter. Uh, because some copywriters are, are very good at writing, you know, very long text. Marketing copy is very, very different. And so find a copywriter who has m marketing copy experience, you know, writing ad headlines, right? Writing ads is great because a blog headline is kind of like an ad, right? You're advertising, you know, you have to get their, their interest enough to click through. And so, um, yeah, either try an independent uh, marketing consultant or try uh, a marketing copywriter. Think of a blog title you used that went viral for the wrong reasons. Something that was controversial. Uh, we don't write controversial headlines <laughs> <laughs> purposely. Um, well, well, the, the so in all in all of our tests, you know, we, we never know what's going to work and what's not. That you know, the ROI of UX was a happy surprise, right? Um, when we started doing, uh, say, uh, you know, the the 14 digital marketing trends of 2014. You know, we had no idea if it would go viral, but you know, it, it did. It, it was, and and that whole series uh, has performed very well. Um, and and you know, sometimes you you run a test and you're you're all excited about it and you think that it's it's going to be a huge success, and and it's not. And in those cases, it was writing a blog and wasn't getting legs. So this is like the first hint. Of Tiger Woods problems. So I, I wrote, who wants to live next to Tiger Woods? And it seems every real estate broker in Florida yeah. sent me listings around that area. People to write them. And it was unexpected, but unusable. unusable. Right, right. Um, yeah, uh, I, I can't think of a, an experience like that, but. It's probably good. 
Yeah, it is probably good. It's probably good, but it could happen to anyone. And, and and again, you just have to keep fine tuning it for your specific audience. How are they going to react? What are they going to find most valuable? What what would they value clicking on? Right? And and yeah, you might you might stumble, right? You might hit a dud. And in that case, maybe change the change the headline. You can change your headline. Go in and change it, right? And so if you're noticing that you're getting some leads that are you know, kind of wasting your time or spammy or, or unqualified, go in and change the headline right away. If you've got a case manager, you usually filters most of that stuff. Spam filters, uh, blog posts. Um, well, so, so what you're talking about is, is a little different. That, that's, that's filtering out all spam, right? And so I think what, what you're saying was yours wasn't spam necessarily. They, 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 were, they were legitimate. Legitimate. To the right. somebody or something. I do a lot of blogging. Mm -hmm. I'm a writer too. I write books. Mm -hmm. But the, the main thing is, you know, where, where you have the needs, that's what you have to write about. Write about where people are, what is really bothering them, mm -hmm. how you can help them solve the problem. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you write something like that, you know, where you are really solving a problem or, you know, People will read it. We live in a very turbulent and chaotic world. The, the, we need answers to some of these things, politically and otherwise, you know. Yeah. So if you are writing something, if you're a thinker, somebody who thinks, you can see it, sit and ponder and, you know, and find ways you can help people solve problems that are plaguing the whole world. Yeah, and yeah. We have no answers to them. I think that's and great, yeah. We have all kinds of political rhetoric and all kinds of things going on. And people are really fearful. So if you can find ways to write something that will calm the people, that will help them, you know, solve their problems and help them relax, mm -hmm. it, will, it, will, it will, you know, start a help life. Absolutely. Solve their problems, help them in any way that you can. Be, be the most helpful blog in your industry. Okay, thank you very much.